Hello, you're welcome to my platform. I am Dr. Sandra Nabukalu and I am a surgeon. I help you become aware and sensitized about the different surgical conditions. Today's video is about eczema gangrenosum. By definition, eczema gangrenosum is an infection of the skin and the fat layers of the body common in people that have a weak immunity, usually due to a bacterium called Pseudomonas aeruginosa. Although Pseudomonas aeruginosa is the commonly implicated bacteria, that is 74% of the time, other causative agents have been implicated. For example, mesithelin resistant Staphylococcus aureus, Streptococcus pyogenes, Neisseria gonorrhoeae, Klebsiella pneumoniae, Escherichia coli, Yersinia pestis and also fungi, especially the candida species and the viruses, especially herpes simplex virus. The causative agents that I've just laid out for you can reach the skin and the fat layers through either blood or direct inoculation, direct introduction. In a setting where the causative agents that I've just laid out for you have reached the skin and the fat layers of the body via blood, Usually the patient has an infection, an ongoing infection within their body. For example, an infection in the respiratory system, for example, the lungs, or an infection in the system that forms urine, the urinary system, for example, in the urinary bladder. And the bacteria is going to be carried by blood to reach the cells of the skin and the fat layers and what happens is that these causative agents can cause a destruction of the layers of the arteries and the arterioles the blood vessels that supply blood from the heart to these areas and this leads into a reduction in the amount of blood and oxygen that reaches the fat cells and the skin this is usually done by a production of the enzymes and toxins by these causative agents leading to a destruction of the layers of the arteries and the arterioles. When Pseudomonas aeruginosa and the other causative agents have been introduced via direct inoculation, it is usually due to trauma, physical trauma. For example, you were walking around and then you got pricked by a log or a metal and then the bacteria was introduced into your skin and the fat layers or you could have had a road traffic accident and the bacteria or the other causative agents got introduced into the skin and the fat layers either way the blood vessels get damaged by the toxins and the enzymes produced by these causative agents and this results into death of the cells of the skin and the fat layers of the body. The parts of the body that are commonly affected by eczema gangrenosum include the anogenital region. For example, the buttocks, the private parts, as well as the anal region. The other part can also be the armpit. So those four parts are commonly affected. The body can also be affected, for example, the legs, the arms, the face, the chest, the abdomen. The individuals that are commonly affected by eczema gangrenosum include people that are immunocompromised, that is 75% of the time. People that show up with eczema gangrenosum have an underlying immunocompromising condition which we should always look out for. Also patients that have some cancers, for example leukemia, patients that have diabetes mellitus, patients that have had extensive burns on their bodies, malnourished patients as well as patients that have hidden failure. The clinical presentation of eczema gangrenosum is that usually the lesions start as macules. The lesions can be multiple or just a single lesion. A macule, by the way, is just a flat, reddened lesion on the skin. 
after some time, there is formation of pus at the center of the macule, that flat reddened lesion that has formed on the skin. This lesion can also have some changes. For example, there can be collection of blood at the center. After some time, that lesion can turn into an ulcer that is covered by a dark black scab. By the way, in eczema gangrenosum, please look out for a rapid transition from the formation of the macule and the formation of the scab. The time between the, the macule and the formation of the dark black scab is very short, sometimes about 12 to 24 hours. So please look out for that rapid transformation from the macule. For example, the patient could have had just a macule in the morning and by evening, the patient has a dark black scab where the macule was. So please look out for that typical presentation of eczema gangrenosum. There's something I really, really want to emphasize about eczema gangrenosum. It has a high mortality, that is 96%, especially in patients that have a low immunity. Also, if you have seen an individual that has the presentation that I've laid out for you, please bring them to the hospital because there's a possibility of them getting into shock. That is a reduction of blood pressure and a reduction in the amount of blood that goes to the vital parts of their body, for example, the kidneys, the brain. And also, these patients, majority of the time, they have a focus of infection. So please bring them to the hospital. If you see an individual of that caliber, they have those presentations on their skin, please bring them to the hospital so that we can investigate for the source of infection. Because majority of the time, if there is no trauma that has occurred, especially physical trauma, there is usually a focus of infection that needs to be investigated and treatment has to be initiated on time before they can get into shock, before their blood pressures can reduce rapidly causing a damage to their vital organs. And of course, majority of the time, these patients are immunocompromised patients. They have a weak immunity, and we always have to investigate why they have a weak immunity so that we can treat the cause of the weak immunity. The investigations that we carry out in eczema gangrenosum include a biopsy. It can be an excisional biopsy or a punch biopsy where we take off a tissue of the lesions and we look at them under the microscope. We can also do a discharge study where we take off a sample of the pus because remember in the clinical presentation, I told you that there is some pus formation within the lesions. So we take off a sample of the pus and we carry out some tests. We can do culture and sensitivity and we can also do gram staining. Just look out for the causative agents. Looking out for the causative agents and identifying them can help us tailor our treatment modalities. We can also do what we call a septic screen. A septic screen is just looking out for the sources of infection. For example, we can do an x-ray looking out for lung infections, a urine analysis looking out for infections in the urine or in the bladder or the system that forms urine. We can also do a complete blood count. We can also do blood cultures. By the way, the blood cultures and the discharge study are usually done before we initiate any kind of treatment. We can as well do HIV tests and a wood lamp test. We can also do ESR and CRP to monitor the progress and response to treatment. When it comes to the treatment of eczema gangrenosum, we usually first take off the samples before starting the treatment. And the following medications have shown to work. The antidomonal beta-lactams, for example, piperacillin, tazobactam, cephalosporins, for example, Cephepim, fluoroquinolones, for example, levofloxacin, ciprofloxacin, carbapenems, for example, meropenem, emipenem. And this can be used as a single class of drugs or they can be combined. 
These medications are used tentatively as we are waiting for the couch and sensitivity results. And once the couch and sensitivity results have come back, the treatment can be directed to that. If there is evidence of infection by viruses and fungi, we can either give antifungal agents or antiviral agents. We can also do debridement where we cut away the dead tissues so that we can enhance wound healing. And if the lesions are big, after some time, for example, the lesions were more than 10 centimeters in diameter, these usually warrant a skin grafting where we take skin from a healthy part of the body and then we cover the defect using that skin. When it comes to the prevention of ecthema gangrenosum, please avoid from at your bodies because remember the causative agents can be introduced by physical trauma. So that means you have to take the necessary precautions to avoid trauma to your bodies. For example, be aware of your environment, make your environment safe and please be safe on the road. Please also have your wounds closed with a sterile dressing and a crepe bandage and don't soil them with water because studies have shown that Pseudomonas aeruginosa is present in tap water, so please make sure that your wounds are always closed and they shouldn't be soiled with water. For the health workers, please make sure that you sterilize the instruments that are used in the theater, the operating theaters, because Pseudomonas aeruginosa has also been found to infect theater instruments. So please make sure that your instruments are always well sterilized. And please, if you're someone that has any condition that can weaken your immune system, for example, you have HIV, you have diabetes mellitus, you have cancers going on, please make sure that if you have any infections in your body, let them be treated because if these are not treated, they can be a focus of infection where the causative agents can be taken by blood to cause eczema gangrenosum in your skin and the fat layers of the body. Yes, that is what I had for you. Thank you so much for listening to me. Please share my videos and also subscribe. See you in my next video. Bye.